with unmanned aerial systems or drones being used for more and more applications such as mapping, surveillance, journalism, delivery, entertainment and whatnot, we can expect that the noise that people are exposed to will increase in the near future. There are regulations and guidelines concerning how noisy an aircraft is allowed to be, for instance, published by the ICAO or the European Commission. However, those now might not be fully applicable in our case as they were not written with, let's say, delivery drones in mind or drone noise in general, which has very specific characteristics. So in the end, we need new regulations, but for this, that is the specification of sensible noise limits and later on noise monitoring, we need to be able to actually measure and quantify the drone noise. And the best would be to be able to measure the drones under realistic conditions. That means flying different maneuvers and not only hovering. Also, we want to be able to do meaningful measurements in a noisy environment. That means getting the noise characteristics of one drone where other noise sources might be present. And the solution for how to simulate something like this that we came up with was, of course, a drone swarm, or to put it in less exciting words, multiple drones flying at the same time. With this, we would get what we want. We get several flight maneuvers and multiple trajectories. We get noise we have to filter out. And when focusing on one drone, we have all the other drones as spurious noise that we have to filter out. Plus, we might accidentally prepare for some dystopian future scenario where drones are all over the place and flying at the same time. Anyway, so what do we have to do to get to the signal of a single drone? Well, first we have to find out where it is, get its trajectory, its position in time. And second, we have to spatially filter out all the noise that is not coming from this exact position. How do we do this? Well, the second point is usually done using microphone array methods. So we set up a, an array of microphones and then use algorithms to filter out all the noise that we don't want. And the first point actually can be done with several methods. For instance, we could use the internal acceleration data of the drone, or we could use a dual camera set up for uh, looking at the drones and then getting the position of that. We actually did this, but it's a lot of work to do and uh, it's not always applicable. So what do you do if it's, I don't know, foggy or if it's nighttime, so you cannot always use the cameras. There are other possibilities like LiDAR or radar or infrared or GPS or whatnot, but we could also just use the setup we now already have. We can use the microphone array also to get to the position of the drones. So that is what we have done as well. Okay, so how does our setup look like? We did all the measurements in the anechoic room at the TU Berlin. We used four identical drones, two of which can be seen here. They are programmable, but they can also be flown remote controlled. On the ground, we put a microphone array with 64 channels. Its dimensions are about 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters. For optical tracking, we also use two GoPro cameras, one of which is positioned in the center of the array, and the other one is on the wall outside the field of view here. We also had to put up a lot of lighting because the drones, they rely on their internal optical sensors for orientation when they are flying on the pre-programmed path. Speaking of which, we programmed several flight scenarios, and we're going to be looking at two of them here. So that's a schematic of the same setup as viewed from above. And the first case that we're going to be looking at is simple one drone flying from A to C. First, we want to get to the trajectory of our drone. How do we do that? Well, in short, we record the time signals simultaneously at all 64 microphones. And then we use time segments of one tenth of a second, where we assume that the drone doesn't move too much. And we do functional beamforming on a 3D grid find local maxima, assume that there's a drone where we find a maximum, and then afterwards filter for plausibility and connect the dots to get a path. Just a few words about the beamforming here. I'm not going to go into the details, but basically we can look at a point in space and see how much acoustic energy is emitted towards us from that point. And we do this not only for one point, but a whole three-dimensional area, which is marked by the dotted lines here. And in our case, we observe a box of 5.2 by 5.2 by 1.7 meters with evenly distributed points of 5 centimeters distance each. This amounts to over 600,000 grid points we're evaluating every tenth of a second. 
The result of this we see here. The orange dots are the points that have been found using our beamforming method. And the blue ones are calculated using the video recordings of the two GoPro cameras. As we get 50 frames per second with the cameras as opposed to 10 with our method, we don't get to have such a high resolution in time. Nevertheless, for finding the trajectory, it doesn't look too bad, and the two methods seem to be more or less in agreement regarding the drone's position. And after some quick plausibility filtering, we get our trajectory. So next, we want to use this trajectory to filter out everything that's not the drone. Well, in the case of one drone in an anechoic room, that's not really much, so we're going to look at a different scenario. So in this case, we're going to use two drones, which fly at the same time. They start at opposite sides and fly towards each other and make a left turn. So step two, separation of drone signals. We start again with what we did anyway. We record synchronously with 64 microphones. And then again, we do some beamforming, but this time not with over 600,000 points, but with only one, which, however, moves along the trajectory we detected earlier. After that, we're done. We repeat this for every path we found and we get the path specific time signal. Okay, here we see the animated result of this calculation displayed in real time. In 3D, the trajectories of the two drones and in the corners, the representations of the time signals as spectrograms. We see that the general characteristics are very similar, but that the signals are also very distinct. So we see higher harmonics of the rotor BPFs, but they are different between the drones and there are also changes when one of the drone accelerates or stops. Okay, that was a little quick, but just to show you the difference, here is the spectrogram as measured by a single microphone and this is the filtered signal of the drone starting at point A. Again, the single microphone and here the signal of the drone starting at point C. Okay, I'm almost at the end of my talk now, so time to summarize. We set up a system that allows us to detect drones in 3D space using only a microphone array. We can also find individuals in a swarm of drones and isolate their signals, getting rid of all unrelated or unwanted noise. I didn't show you this, but the system is currently not able to run in real time. And it also wasn't that important for us in the beginning. However, when I know where the bottlenecks are, and I think it's realistic to adapt it, so it can actually be used for real-time applications later on. The time domain beamforming used for the getting the time signals of the drones is usually not the best algorithm for source separation, so there's also some potential for improvement here. But I think, nevertheless, that the current performance is already quite impressive, and I want to show you this once more. However, this will only work if you're watching this video with a stereo setup. This is the view of the wall-mounted camera, and the scenario shown here is one with four randomly flying remote-controlled drones. You cannot really see them very well in this video, so one more reason to not use only cameras for tracking. So there's one here, here, one here, and here. All of them were tracked, and the isolated signal of these two will be played on the two stereo channels until the end of their respective trajectory.